হ্যাঁ প্রফেসর হোসেন হ্যালো यस यस आई हैव जॉइंट बट थ्रू मोबाइल आई एम इट टू जॉइन टू लैपटॉप आई एम ट्राइंग ओके बट यू कैन स्टार्ट then uh, are you be able to show your presentation uh, yeah yeah uh, definitely let, let me try but you can start the initial okay. okay no because there is not much uh, inaugurations only introduction about the speaker then i will start because okay actually uh, uh, your this mail is there in my yahoo mail that is not opening and my official mail i am not getting the link that is the problem No, so, 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 so I can forward. If, if if you want, I can yeah, forward. You for, yeah, you forward in my official mail. Okay. 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 Uh, Aminalda, uh, link has been sent to your official mail. So please check. Uh, let me check. Actually, it takes sometimes uh, one two minutes. Our okay. official mail is through NIC, na? So maybe one two minute will take it. Okay, okay. I I am joining. Hopefully now I will be able to. Okay. Yes, Doctor. Okay. So you have joined through computer. So shall we start? Hello. Yes. So. Hello. Can you hear me? Can you hear yes, me? Yes. 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 Oh, okay. Then you can start. good evening uh, respected speaker of this session professor minal pal my dear participants from different parts of the country on behalf of the department of physics tripura university and on behalf of aicte training and learning academy i welcome you all to this faculty development program on fundamentals of thin film 
preparation and characterization techniques. Normally, Department of Physics, Tripura University, we organize different events time to time. From Otol Academy, we have organized already three programs. This is the fourth in the series. Another program we will organize in the February 2023. In this, uh, this time, faculty development program will be for two weeks, one week online and uh, followed by one week offline. During online, there will be six lectures, six sessions uh, till 24th, then one day break followed by uh, physical uh, program. There will be demonstration as well as some practical uh, part. So after the program, uh, at the end part of the online program, that is on Saturday, 24th of September, there will be a test, online test based on MCQ. So I request all the participants to participate this MCQ and this will be preliminary based on the lectures. This is one part and there will be attendance through Google form. We will share the attendance in the chat box at the end part of each sessions and at the end of the program. I will transfer this information uh, to the AICT. Then you have to give your feedback through online portal. And once these three things are completed, then Otol will issue the certificates. So this is the process. I hope uh, this uh, uh, topic, fundamentals of thin films, is very important and uh, all speakers will speak about basics as well as uh, preliminary uh, kind of introduction kind of things about thin films and hope all the participants will be benefited with this let me introduce our speaker uh, today's speaker is dr minal pal he is chief scientist and head of the functional materials and device division csir central glass and ceramic research institution kolkata uh, Professor Pal has done his postdoctoral research in University of Roma, Italy, followed by again postdoctoral research in Japan, then sometimes in Russia. Then he joined University of Bordeaux in 2002. Then he shifted to CSIR Central Mechanical Engineering Research Institute, Durgapur in 2010 and finally he shifted to his present place C C CSIR CGCRI for the last 25 years Dr. Pal is doing research activities in different areas of nanomaterials precisely functional nanomaterials including multiferroic nanocomposites magnetic nanocomposites spintronics material arboxide glass and glass ceramics and many other areas. He has already published more than 100 research papers, completed seven major research projects. Three are ongoing. He guided seven PhDs and several others are working. He is associated with several scientific bodies, editorial board of different journals. And uh, in 2016, he was awarded prestigious Material Research Society India Award. He is also fellow of West Bengal Academy of Science and Technology. With this, I welcome Dr. Pal. And we are grateful to Dr. Pal because time to time he is associated with our departments and uh, he always accept our invitations and extend his cooperations and deliver lectures and also attended different scientific activities. With this, I welcome Dr. Pal once again and request to start his lecture. Sir, please. Uh, yeah. Good evening, everybody. 
and let me first uh, thank organizer for giving me this opportunity to talk before you uh, i can understand that it uh, it will be a very good program on thin film uh, so today is your uh, first lecture of this uh, two weeks program and i am the first speaker so i will basically try to introduce uh, what the thin film is what is uh, is activity is application why this is special then bulk material and everything so uh, actually i will give you a uh, overview of all activities of uh, thin film related things and it will be a very basic type lecture i will not give you any uh, details of our uh, group activities or our departmental activities mainly i will give you idea about thin film so that uh, as i understood many of you are uh, at the beginning of your research career many of uh, uh, of uh, you are junior faculty members so i uh, considering all those things i understood that it will be better if i give a kind of overview without going details into any of our activity but certainly if you people are interested somebody are interested uh he or she can directly contact with me uh, with my email address or uh, through professor hoshen see uh, uh, giving lecture in tripura university is nothing new to me it's uh, kind of my second home every time i visit uh, tripura university this time because of corona uh, maybe for uh, for last two years uh, i am giving on virtual platform but uh, i am always interested to go there in fact if possible next week i will visit there also i will try my best uh, though i am uh, nowadays very busy uh, as you can understand i am uh, head of my department and in our uh, csr culture it is uh, more than r and d activities lot of administrative activities are there so i am not sure uh, what i will be uh, uh, able to do whether but tomorrow i will confirm whether i will be able to go to uh, tripura university next week and if i can go then definitely those who will attend uh, physically uh, i will be happy to meet all of you there also but for the time being please concentrate on my lecture i hope uh, this uh, slides is visible is it okay yes yes yeah so no problem in audio and yes, video sir. no problem in audio and video no problem sir okay okay so let me start okay once again welcome to my uh, this session and as this is a uh, first session as professor hosen said for this auto innovation program uh, so i feel honored that they have given me the first lecture and as per their request so i will give you uh, an overview so i have kept the title very simple very simple i am not going into uh, details of any of any particular material or any particular thin film or any particular topics or any tools so title is synthesis characterization and application of thin films an overview i think the among the participants and also among the faculty members from tripura and other place i think maybe somebody of you are uh, expert in thin films and maybe there are some people those who are not expert in this film so i have uh, taken consideration of both the things and i have prepared my slides accordingly even my slides are so uh, simple uh, those who have just completed their master degree and started their career in uh, this activities they can also easily understand everything and for your information though they are uh, it's a long lecture and there are enough time for discussion even if if somebody feel so uh, you can stop me anywhere in you can ask me anything but i think preferably it's better to Uh, complete the presentation and then uh, this question answer or uh, discussion session is better okay so uh, i have been introduced by professor hosen i am uh, minal pal from csr cgcri kolkata maybe many of you uh, know this and uh, this institute and my email address is given below for your convenience so any time anybody can contact with me okay so let's start with uh, this slide which called how thick is thin film let me tell you this is the very very basic uh, point of this thin film because it is uh, nowadays a little bit confusing uh, to define thin film and in fact uh, let me clear you there is no fixed boundary line ki up to that it will be thin film or it is it is otherwise it will not thin film like uh, not like that that's why i keep the title like that that 
how thick is thin film so uh, let me tell you if you consider any material actually and if we go from uh, bottom side so material is consist of uh, atoms then molecule then particle and then uh, slowly it will be bigger accordingly there will be their atomic level molecular level then band and all those things so uh, to define a thin film i must say if you if you look at this scale which is given here and i think it is clearly visible and you can read this thin film should be a region where the thickness of the film is below micron level actually thin film should be defined as sub micron uh, level uh, film thickness level film but uh, as i told you there is no boundary line but conventionally we said that they are below 1 micron and let me tell you another thing once again that even if it is thin film if it is in nanometer dimension means nanometer you know that this is 10 to the power minus 9 if it is uh, in that uh, dimension of few nanometer then instead of thin film it's better to say it ultra thin film okay and if you go beyond nano one nanometer uh, micrometer uh, means above one micrometer to few uh, at least 100 micrometer then that region is called thick film and thick film are uh, basically uh, uh, can be uh, seen using any optical microscope you can see everything in thick film and above that it is uh, it could be foil it could be seat it could be uh, board kind of things means they are basically in bulk category what do i mean by bulk and other bulk means they are totally three dimensional structure but if we uh, say about thin film or ultra thin film they are really not in bulk category they are little bit different my next uh, coming slide will explain that one so that is how define thin film and that is the how the thick a thin film is so again i am telling it is below one micrometer uh, thickness film then it, it will be thin film so now thin film versus bulk film why i am showing you this one because if you go really if you prepare really thin film or if you consider really thin film then many of the properties of the bulk material or thick film will be different than uh, their counterpart so in thin film form uh, every property almost density resistivity conductivity refractive index dielectric constant uh, overall electrical property thermal property mechanical property even even then structure everything will change and that change again also depend on thickness of the film so that is important again the here thickness is coming so uh, please keep in mind that thickness is the factor for thin film and thick film and ultra thin film which i have defined in my previous slide if you uh, look into this uh, right hand side corner slide all of you know that this is basically a slide when we go to pathological lab uh, for blood test they do this kind of thing and uh, at the uh, this uh, circular spot is thick film kind of things actually what they do if you uh, i don't know whether uh, somebody has noticed it not after collected blood from your uh, from your body what they do they basically drop one um, drop of blood in a slide which is here this uh, uh, circular spot that is as they are casting one drop and it is confined within a very small circular position this is basically considered as a thick film and after that they took another slide and from that slide they try to draw another uh, film kind of things which is uh, at the right hand side so that is in their sense it is thin film so uh, that is the difference because in that one drop of blood they cannot see anything in microscope because they have to check your blood under a microscope but if they make it thin film using another slide just by rubbing on the it they can make a kind of thin film though honestly speaking this is not a thin film this is this is also in micron level but from that is sufficient for them to examine our blood so that is in a crude sense difference between thin film and thick film okay now i must say when you are in thin film form again in comparison with bulk there will be some more special properties 
which is mentioned in this slide means uh, if it is really thin film it should not be uh, as dense as uh, bulk material that thin film should be always under stress whether stress is low or uh, high that depends upon stress could be compressive stress could be tensile that depends upon how you are preparing and what is your substrate because there is a question of matching of substrate and film so but it will be under stress also a lot of uh, defect structure will grow in thin film that will uh, in fact control many properties and also it will be uh, kind of a quasi two dimensional we said because uh, that is really uh, uh, very very thin film uh, then it is quasi two dimensional and most important which i have uh, marked in red that is in case of thin film actually you will see the strong influence of surface and interface effect and that basically gives uh, some impact on different properties of material and that's why also electrical magnetic optical therm uh, thermal mechanical all kind of property of thin film will differ from its bulk counterpart if you look at the right hand side top uh, figure you see that uh, i have tried to show you that uh, the first one that film is under compressive strain that's why compress as there is compressive stress it curvature is like oval shape like curvature but when it is under tensile state it is again um, uh, curvature there is a curvature it's not it's not flat because of the stress and that will give some mechanical property also and if you look at the bottom part of this uh, figure there you see uh, i don't know whether it is clear or not uh, can you see that one hello yes yeah so the uh, bottom part is substrate then the black part is thin film one and on top of that there is another thin film which is marked as thin film two so now try to understand what is interface interface there are two interface in the structure one is substrate and the uh, joining part of the thin film one which is marked as interface one if you zoom your screen you can see that one and there is another interface which is uh, the top of the bulk uh, uh, top, uh, top of the black thin film which is thin film one and the bottom of the uh, thin film two which is marked as interface two so these are called interface and these interface has really lot of impacts on different properties of uh, thin film and that's why also thin film gives different property than its bulk counterpart uh, what i mean to say for example if you consider a very simple material like zinc oxide which is very common uh, for uh, this uh, thin film study the properties of zinc, uh, zinc oxide like its conductivity is mechanical uh, uh, strain and all those things that is definitely differ when you will make a uh, kind of very thin film of zinc oxide or ultra thin uh, ultra fine thin film of zinc oxide and the reason is all those things because of it's not fully dense it will be under stress there will be a lot of vacancies and also there will be certainly some effect of surface or interface and that is why in fact thin film is so important uh, so far particularly application is concerned so i hope uh, by saying all those things uh, in my last two three slides i am able to explain you what is thin film and what is this bulk counterpart and why properties are different but again i will say why people are so interested on thin film because as i mentioned you all the properties will change and all the properties will change because of these uh, uh, these uh, effects which i have mentioned here but still there is another big contribution which is demonstrated in my this this slide what is this slide basically it's a slide of nanomaterials i think all of you know what is nanomaterials it is the material where the materials particle size or domain size whatever you may say that is less than a few uh, for example less than 100 nanometers and you know that one nanometer is uh, one nanometer is 10 to the power minus 9 meter and what i am trying to say here you look at the picture very carefully and from left hand side you see in left hand side figure it is a kind of different size 
drops or different types spherical particle we call them zero dimensional particle and uh, in more physics term it is called quantum dot why they are called quantum dot because see that particles are very very small and they are really kind of dot and in this case for quantum dot as you know that a material has three dimension x y z in this case for quantum dots or for, for very very small nanoparticles all the three dimension will be constrained or restricted that means inside that quantum dot or particle they uh, the electrons will behave like uh, uh, particle in a box uh, kind of things and they will show quantum oil kind of behavior okay because all three directions are constant their movement will be very very restricted that is called zero dimensional uh, material or quantum dot they are nothing but very very small nanoparticle then you see the second one which is called one dimensional which are one dimensional material <coughs> one dimensional materials are nothing but nowadays we call nano wire nano uh, tube kind of things okay what is special in that case in that case only two directions one direction is restricted uh, two directions are restricted and in one direction you can you are not restricted and you can go on increasing means if you consider nano wire we never uh, say that its length are in nanometer dimension because length has no restriction so that direction has no such limit but other two direction if length is in z direction you plot then x y direction is again constant that means for one dimensional particle uh, for like a nano wire or a nano tube in that case two directions are constrained and one directions are open now come to this one two dimensional which is like thin film type of things that's why i have uh, presented this slide uh, to you what is two dimensional in this case x y direction is open is not constrained not uh, restricted only one direction is restricted so for two dimensional material only one direction which is nothing but thickness that is restricted and that also belongs to nano material because that uh, if that is ultra fine uh, thin film or uh, very thin film then it also goes in nanometer uh, nanomaterials uh, types of things because yeah uh, thickness is in nanometer form so the thin film or ultra thin film which is the topic of the day in fact which is the topic of your faculty development program that belongs to that this category two dimensional uh, material things because x y is uh, not restricted but z direction certainly the thickness direction that is restricted uh, what does it in indicate it indicates if we compare with its bulk form means three dimensional form in this case for two dimensional electron is free to x move anywhere in xy direction but in the z direction it has restriction it is constant because z direction is very small it is its thickness is in the nanometer direction uh, nanometer uh, dimension okay so that is is today's topic it is the uh, thin film and last one which is called three dimensional that we call bulk material means that material has all three direction x y z and electron inside the particles are free to move in any direction there is no uh, constraint all the directions are free so from this slide i wanted to bring you notice that the thin film which is your topic of your faculty development that if it is really thin uh, like in nanometer dimension so that is uh, the, belongs to two dimensional material where xy has no limit but the z direction is constant it has a limit because uh, it is thickness dependent and if it is thickness dependent it belongs to nanomaterials and if it is nanomaterials then certainly most of the properties will be changed than its bulk counterpart again why i am showing this because if it is uh, in nanomaterial uh, di nanometer dimension one important thing which happens is surface to volume ratio you know why people are nowadays so interested on nano they are so interested is nano mostly because of this factor surface to volume ratio if you go down from bulk to nanometer size uh, particle then 
what happens is surface to volume ratio will, will increase drastically and that is one important factor because if surface uh, to volume ratio increases drastically then it's it surface activity will be very much high and it will show different uh, properties than it bulk counter for so as a example i have shown this cube as uh, as an example you see first one first cube is one meter length as it is a simple cube so abc is same so it has six surface so its surface area is six meter square now you do one thing you just cut in the middle of each surface then what will happen this same cube will have will become eight cubes of half dimension and if it is so it will be uh, uh, then area will be this half into uh, six into half square into eight means 12 meter square again if you really divide each surface into three different parts then actually it will have though it is six surface but it will have basically 27 number of cube of one third of his abc whatever you call it, it's all same one third of its length so all total the surface area will be 18 meter square so from this what i mean to say that your surface area is increasing though the volume remains same volume is everywhere it is one meter cube but you see by making the smaller size you are increasing surface area and that too very drastic from 6 to 12 to 18 and if you go on decreasing the size then the change of uh, the surface uh, to volume ratio will be much more uh, drastic for example uh, if, if you i think all of you have uh, noticed as your background is physics or chemistry let's say uh, so uh, all of you know that if you drop a mercury drop into floor that mercury drop will divided into many droplets so you consider here you had one drop in your hand or in your uh, spoon one mercury drop so volume is fixed and you are dropping that one in floor so the same volume is becoming may 10 20 droplets so volume remains same but surface area will be much more higher and totally speaking that surface to volume ratio will increase drastically and that is one important factor which gives rise to different drastic change in different property for nanomaterials if you consider or if you compare with its bulk counterpart and why i am showing all those things this phenomena is true for thin film particularly for ultra thin film if thickness is very very low then instead of having all those proper special property which i have mentioned you the defects the stress this surface to volume ratio also increases enormously and that's why we get drastic change in property for thin film also and we try to use that property in different application that's why nowadays you will find lot of application of thin films in varieties of uh, in various sector that i will uh, discuss in at the uh, later half of my talk so that is that is the thing how what is thin film what is ultra thin film how we can differ uh, define uh, uh, how we can uh, different them uh, from bulk or thick film and why that properties are coming everything i have tried to explain but still at the end of my talk if anybody has any question any queries or if, if anybody need any clarification i am very much open now i am going to second part of my talk that is preparation of thin film okay you hello hello yes yes please continue yeah, yeah everything is fine no yes yeah okay so uh, uh participant please uh, note this slide this slide is the summary of everything all the uh, film preparation technique it's uh, a single slide but it says lot of things okay so what does it say it says that if you want to prepare because i have defined thin film i have um, show you what is why it is different than bulk and what are the physical things what happens inside the thin film 
all those things I, I have explained. So now my present responsibility is to uh, how to prepare thin film in laboratory. So this is the table. I will show this single slide only for this uh, deposition technique or preparation technique. So which is gist of everything. So you look at very carefully. I have categorically defi uh, divided uh, the preparation technique in two categories. One is physical technique, another is chemical technique. People, those who are involved in materials uh, preparation, uh, or I can say those who are material scientists, they know it very well that all the material preparation technique, whether it is thin film, it is bulk material, whatever may be nanomaterial, grossly we can divide them in two categories. Preparation technique can be divided into two categories. One is physical, another is chemical. What is the basic difference? Simply saying, physical does not involve any kind of liquid, liquid or gaseous phase, whereas in case of chemical technique, it involves liquid and gaseous phase. Okay, so that is the basic difference. And accordingly, you can also understand if you read some article and if you go through the preparation technique, you can uh, clearly understand whether that they have used physical technique or chemical technique. However, for the sake of simplicity, I am saying like that. However, physical technique includes a lot of different techniques. Similarly, chemical techniques also include a lot of different techniques. In physical technique, again, I can subcategorize into two parts grossly. One is sputtering type of thing. Another is evaporation type of thing. Sputtering has also various kind of things. It could be magneton sputtering. It could be DC sputtering. It could be AC sputtering. It could be blow discharge, this is sputtering, different kind of things. Similarly, for evaporation, it could be vacuum evaporation, it could be resistive heating evaporation, it could be laser evaporation. So it could be anything. But the basic point is, in all these process, which are under this physical category, whether sputtering or evaporation, there is no concept of liquid or in fact in that set, sense gas. Okay. Now you come to this chemical section. This chemical section also can be grossly uh, divided into two parts. One is your uh, this gas phase preparation technique. Another is liquid phase uh, uh, preparation technique. Gas phase liquid uh, preparation technique basically uh, club as chemical vapor technique. And under this <coughs> chemical vapor technique, there are many things like this. Uh, laser chemical vapor technique, plasma uh, uh, plasma enhanced vapor te deposition technique, many things. Similarly, for liquid phase also, there are various kind of chemical technique. It could be sol gel technique, it could be uh, deep coating, it could be spin coating. Uh, various kind of things are there. But the basic thing, as I define chemical technique, in both cases, either it contains some kind of gaseous phase or liquid phase. So that is grossly the categorization of all the material preparation technique in this particular case the thin film deposition technique or thin film preparation technique however please note you can prepare many material using any of the techniques problem is you have to have that facilities because many techniques which i have mentioned here uh, many of them are very very costly uh, set up in many cases, the equipments are um, uh, very costly of the order of few crores also. Definitely, there are some cheap method also and all uh, most of the cheap methods are mostly chemical based method. Okay, that I will come, uh, come later again, I will uh, take in this issue. So that is grossly uh, categorization of thin film deposition process. Now, I will little bit discuss about two, three process because as this is a faculty development uh, program, this is my responsibility to give some details of some, I cannot go for all the techniques. So, but I should definitely give you something, uh, uh, say more details about some process like this chemical vapor technique. As I said in my previous sli slide, you can again see that gaseous phase is basically clubbed as chemical vapor technique though, though uh, it has some plasma enhanced vapor technique and many other techniques but in general it is chemical vapor technique and physical also many of them can be clubbed as particularly evaporation technique 
can be clubbed as even sputtering also clubbed as phys uh, physical vapor deposition uh, PVD. So grossly, for chemical uh, vapor deposition it is CVD and for physical vapor deposition it is uh, PVD. So let me explain one by one. So come to chemical vapor deposition. Why we called it uh, chemical vapor deposition? Because here we use some chemicals directly in gaseous form. And this is, a, uh, this is basically a technique where we use high temperature. And in this case, particularly for CBD, generally we use for limited cases but, uh, for some carbide, for nit uh, some nitride films. And it is uh, not that much versatile also. Though it has some advantage, definitely it has some disadvantage also. Particularly advantages are uh, like it is uh, for particularly for hard uh, film uh, preparation, uh, we use this process because its uh, uh, preparation technique is good. So if we uh, want some deposit some hard coating like this carbide or nitrate, which are very hard, it is better or it is recommended to use some kind of chemical vapor technique. Also, another positive side of chemical vapor technique is its addition. Actually, what happens uh, as this is a high temperature process, uh, the materials is uh, very uh, nicely stick to the substrate. Uh, probably I have uh, not mentioned clearly to you or I have forgot that for every thin film, thin film, if it is really thin film, we always need one substrate because thin film will be deposited or coated on some substrate. So this addition means, good addition means your film will be very much stick to your substrate and it will be very much durable. Long, it will be very much, uh, its longevity will be very high. And also another advantage is good throwing. What is good throwing? Good throwing means all the uh, uh, gaseous materials will deposited on same way and you are supposed to get an uniform film. So these are the uh, advantage of chemical vapor technique. Definitely, as I mentioned, everything has uh, some pros and cons. This process has also a lot of disadvantage like this is, as I mentioned, this is a high temperature process. In most cases, it is uh, 800 to 1000 degrees centigrade. In some cases, this is much higher uh, for particularly some uh, for some carbide and nitride. And it needs some special kind of harness and technique uh, for doing this uh, kind of uh, chemical vapor deposition. And also, uh, it's, uh, it's limited to very few material for some hard material only. And also, uh, is it environmental concern about this process is very a because uh, we use in gaseous form and lot of gases comes out also from your uh, this CBD so uh, it has some hazardous effect also so these are briefly about chemical vapor deposition and if you look at the sketch of or schematic of CBD chemical vapor deposition it will be looks like that so all the gaseous molecule here, I repainted a black dot and a gray dot uh, for two different things. For example, this is titania and uh, another could be carbide or titania or another could be nitrogen. But all of them will be in gaseous form and they will mix together and slowly they will be deposited on the substrate. This bottom one is the substrate and they will slowly deposited on the substrate and slowly uh, the uh, from atomic layer to it will go to uh, some uh, certain thickness okay so that is the schematic of cvd now come to pvd as i said pvd is again clubbed of uh, most of the physical vapor deposition technique most of the sputtering and evaporation comes in this technique this is completely different type this is completely different than cvd because in cvd we use some gas but in this case in pvd we don't use any gas we sometimes use a lot of uh, ions or something like that, but never gas. And the basic difference is here, the material which we wanted to prepare, first we have to have some target material of the same material, which we uh, I have mentioned here is a solid target material of the same material of which you are interested to prepare a thin film. So you have to first purchase a target. And that target has, uh, there, there is in the device, there is some target holder and that target uh, of the same material 
will be uh, will be hang on that holder and then from outside actually this is a uh, vacuum process and then from outside different particularly uh, what i say this is inert gases like argon neutron this kind of gases is uh, charged in the chamber and they are accelerated with some uh, high voltage system and they hit the target in very high speed and because of that interaction at high speed molecules atoms or in some cases some smaller particles directly ejected from the solid target and they came down to the substrate substrate is at below you can see that it is written substrate and slowly uh, that thin film will deposited on the substrate so the basic difference uh, from cbd to pvd is in in case of cbd we use gas and we don't need any target but here in pvd pvd we need to have some target you have to prepare target in laboratory first or you have to purchase that uh, for example if you want to prepare a zinc oxide using pvd then you have to have a zinc oxide target first either you prepare that in your laboratory or you can simply purchase it uh, from mark and other companies alries uh, you can purchase it and you use that target to prepare same zinc oxide but in the thin film form and the uh, process which i have mentioned here is uh, uh, is like that your target has to be heated heat by uh, means knocked by high powered uh, some kind of ions uh, in part uh, in particular case it is generally some inert gas ions like argon nitrogen so that it does not um, uh, react with the target material they basically knocked out atoms molecules uh, small particles from the target and slowly that is deposited on the substrate that's that's how the process is and like every process this process also has uh, some advantage and also disadvantage this process is excellent but uh, and also this is uh, so advantage is that this is excellent and it is a very low temperature process that means uh, you can deposit uh, film using pvd almost at room temperature and in some cases room temperature and also in this case film will be very dense and also uh, you can use uh, different material uh, simultaneously to make some alloys and compounds but at the same time it has disadvantages also the first and foremost and important disadvantage is it is really very costly uh, system because you have to have a very good uh, vacuum system and all together you have you, in most of the cases for sputtering they use some magnet also so all together it is a costly affair and also its coating rate is very slow but the thing is in this case uh, you can use its more versatile way you can prepare more material which is limited for cvd so now let me explain you sputtering process directly sputtering is a kind of as i mentioned it is a kind of pvd kind of process and the schematic which i have presented for this uh, pvd it's uh, i am explaining in sputtering case you see that in left hand side nozzle there is sputtering gas inlet so through that we basically inject argon type of things or nitrogen kind of uh, gases which are mostly uh, inert gas and at the top you see that is the sputtering target which is uh, green one and using some uh, high uh, power and magnet we can accelerate this uh, argon uh, gases in fact they will be become argon ion and uh, we can accelerate them and they can uh, stack the sputtering target at very high speed and from that uh, impact lot of atom molecules or smaller particle came out from the target and ultimately they will be deposited at the substrate which is yellow color at the uh, lower base and on that this thin film which is in green that will be deposited and the uh, other gases extra gases there is outlet and that uh, through that outlet gases can be go out okay so this is the simple sputtering process you can use as a magnet in this dc form or ac form that depends what you want to sputter it is material dependent and also 
thickness of the film depends on uh, how much electrical power you are using and what is the plasma density means the gases argon or neon or nitrogen kind of gas which we use as a sputtering gas using high voltage <coughs> we make them in um, what i uh, say in plasma form and that plasma density is also factor uh, that also uh, determine the thickness of the film and also time of uh, sputtering you can understand that if you uh, sputter for long time then definitely you will have some thick film and if you sputter for less time you will have uh, thin film and you can control all these parameter because all uh, the controlling parameters are in, in your hand and by this process you can on principle prepare very very thin film also of the order of nanometer dimension now grossly cvd versus pvd i have mentioned everything earlier but in a single slide you can uh, see the difference so cvd is high temperature process whereas pvd is low temperature process in case of cvd uh, cvd you can end up with a thick film but in case of pvd you can get thin film and ultra thin film in case of cvd uniformity is very good as throwing is very good but for pvd uniformity is not that much good in cvd as it is high temperature surfaces uh, so in this case generally tensile stress grows but for pvd generally compressive stress grows so these are basically difference between cvd and pvd and depending upon your material depending upon availability you can use cvd or pvd but let me tell you almost every material can be prepared using pvd but not every material is uh, able to prepare by cvd because cvd is high temperature process and many material actually uh, evaporate before that only uh, because uh, we use generally above 1800 degree c and as you know lot of material will melt before that temperature that's why cvd is restricted it is only for hard coating and for material which have high melting point like carbide nitride kind of things so i have grossly explained you everything and uh, that pvd and cvd schematically also i have described so that you can understand these uh, all the processes under cvd under pvd now i will uh, show you another one two process which are kind of special kind of process uh, for example this is ion implantation from the term you can understand that in this process we basically implant some ion what happens actually in this case you have to have some again some targeted material and some uh, it is a vacuum process some high energetic ions prepared from other source will be targeted to that target directed to that target and they will come to that target and they will hit the target and ultimately they will collide with the target atom and they will lose their energy and they will stay in that surface only and depending upon the energy of the ions and their velocity it can penetrate few layers also up to some nanometer also mostly it is in angstrom angstrom case but in some cases some nanometer also depending upon the energy of the ion beam this is also a costly process because uh, to create that ion is uh, very difficult but the advantage is this is low temperature process and this is very versatile on principle you can prepare um, ions of any material and you can use any material as a target material and uh, you can dope any ions on that okay and as this is direct heating there will be very less distortion and the uh, semiconductor industry generally use this process while they are doping very less amount of uh, some Uh, dopant okay so because this is a very perfect process there is some uh, dis disadvantage also it cannot spray it is very line specific only beam will uh, just hit in a line to the target and it cannot spread so it will be kind of point defects kind of thing in some uh, some cases ion implantation also be called as a point defect kind of things but on principle you can treat as a very thin layer at a region at a particular locality so this is also another kind of process uh, by which you can prepared 
very thin film in particular region or in a very small region yes there is many other process this is one chemical process which called langmuir blodgett deposition technique this is nothing but uh, this is particularly very useful for kind of organic materials actually by using uh, by spreading organic material uh, above in general uh, on water this kind of uh, deposition is possible and this technique has special uh, advantage that it is, uh, by this also you can prepare very very thin film in fact uh, of the order of uh, it can it can be kind of molecular level and of the order of angstrom level also possible and for various kind of organic material you can use this and another thing is important thing is you can prepare multiple layer one after another you just uh, take one layer then take it out take your substrate out from the source and then you dry it then you can repeat the process same and by that process you can do layer by layer deposition also i will not uh, go beyond that because this is the technique there are many expert in this faculty development program who will explain you more details and in fact i uh, i think i guess they will show a lot of activities also their activities on this langbur uh, blodgett deposition technique okay so in this second part of my talk i have summarily discussed various kind of deposition technique to you and in some cases i have uh, shown some uh, i have discussed in little bit uh, detail what are the process particularly cvd uh, pvd and sputtering technique now you look at this picture which i have collected from internet in fact many of my slides are collected uh, from internet because this is a kind of overview kind of talk and i am not uh, showing you any data or any activities our activities in this uh, presentation so if you search uh, if you google it many of the slide you will uh, find however uh, if somebody is interested i will supply this to the uh, to professor hosen and from uh, him you can collect my presentation also i have no problem but i have prepared all those slides uh, by putting a uh, huge amount of time just for the sake of understanding everything in the thin film because uh, as i mentioned in my title this is a kind of overview so now look at this chart this chart actually x axis is the year and y axis is number of publishing if you look at very carefully it is from uh, 1990 to 2020 you see black uh, column is for sol gel technique this red column is for cbd and green column is for sputtering technique particularly rx sputtering technique you see initially that red means cbd technique was uh, much higher number of publication from cbd but if you look at uh, after uh, 2000 5 or 2010 that sol gel technique is superseding and ultimately uh, the, uh, the technique uh, sol gel technique is much more um, higher uh, after 2010 and nowadays it is mostly used than cbd than pvd than sputtering why because uh, in my beginning i have also mentioned that cbd and pvd they are cost they need some costly instrument though in all cases uh, they are not that much costly but in many cases this sputtering technique this cvd technique the instruments are of the uh, cost of the instrument are of the order of crores so for small laboratory for small universities uh, it is very difficult to set up this kind of facilities so there is alternative as i mentioned that time that is chemical process chemical process means it could be uh, it could be drop casting it could be uh, your Uh, uh spin coating or it could be soft chemical route or sol gel route so as this is very cheap process and this is industry uh, friendly means this technique can be very easily adopted by industry without much uh, investment that's why nowadays people are more interested on this kind of sol gel technique rather i can say chemical technique and this technique uh, some of the sol gel uh, chemical technique are so easy if you just take even for a beginner if you just go to few literatures you can start it from your uh, own lab 
in, even if you are in some college also you can uh, prepare thin film using some kind of uh, this kind of chemical techniques it could be uh, sol gel or it could be uh, some soft chemical process which is very cheap process you don't need any uh, costly instrument you don't need any costly chemicals uh, just by using some salt also uh, some chemical salt you can prepare this that's why the publication on this sol gel method is much higher after 2005 or uh, you can say 2010 because as you uh, as i have explained that maximum researcher does not have this kind of sophisticated facilities so they are forced to use this chemical technique and also if you can establish your chemical technique for a particular application of thin film that will be easily accepted by industry for application purpose because uh, they don't need to uh, invest much in your this uh, taking this technology as for example in csr as we are in csr we always prefer that which will be uh, which technology will be of low cost because our target is always to develop some technology which will be industry friendly means which will uh, easily attract industry people even some msme can also take that technology without investing much more that's why i have uh, shown this <coughs> chart and from that you can get the inspiration that uh, maybe you don't have that kind of uh, sophisticated instrument but still if you are interested if you consult some literature by chemical process you can prepare some thin film and you can uh, carry out your research work that is kind of a motivational slide that's why i have put it because i know that many of you are beginner now so i have finished the uh, preparation technique also the story about all the preparation technique and acceptance of technique among the researchers <laughs> now the next part is growth of thin film you know when we are uh, making any thin film either you use uh, cvd or means chemical process or physical process always it is from some small particle or small atom to this bigger film bulk film either thick or thin or ultra thin whatever may be so it's a kind of we say in scientific term we say it's a kind of nucleation and growth process what is nucleation and growth process if i try to explain you very simple way uh, say for uh, example you are uh, boiling some water in a uh, container so you take some water in a container and you just on your heater or gas you see after few minutes that in some point at the bottom surface of your uh, of your container there will be generating some small small bubble in some places only and with time that number will go on increasing and with time the size of the bubble also go on increasing and ultimately they will coalesce and they will make big big bubble and it will try uh, it will evaporate so that process when it is it is started with few uh just kind of drop kind of things uh, very small bubble at the surface bottom surface of your container that we call nucleation and after that when it uh, try to grow in bigger size and coalesces with one another and make it bigger bigger that we call growth so same thing happen in case of material uh, preparation when we take the bottom up, bottom up approach means uh, from atomic scale to we go to bulk or thin or ultra thin okay so for this thin film also it is a kind of nucleation and growth process and in this process basically uh, what happens uh, it started with nucleation technique and then it's grow and in this process there are three kind of uh, three, three kind of process can happen one is called island growth another is called layer growth another is island and layer mixed what is that basically island uh, growth means they will be kind of separated you look at this picture very carefully the figure one it is mentioned as island structure figure b <coughs> it is uh, mentioned as uniform film means layer structure and figure c it is you see it is mentioned as island structure as well as uniform film so what i want to say you that any of these three can happen for your cases depending upon what kind of materials you are uh, trying to deposit and wha what kind of substrate you are using if the bonding between the uh, materials atoms are very strong 
then they will try to form this kind of island kind of structure but if the bonding is less and the bonding between atoms and the substrate uh, atoms is strong then basically they will not cluster together and they will try to form this kind of uh, bigger size means they will form film type of thing ultimately which will come uniform type of film okay and the if the uh, bonding strength is in between then there is every possibility that in some atom in case of some atoms they will prepare this layer kind of things and in case of some atoms they will prepare island kind of things and ultimately it will be a mixture of island and film so what i mean to say that uh, for every uh, thin film making uh, uh, thin film making process the growth mechanisms is same it, it should be either island kind of structure it should be either a film kind of layer kind of structure or it should be island and layer structure both and if you look at the microscopic uh, range then you can uh, see all those structure which is schematically presented here now after your growth of your film the process which i have uh, you have uh, used in your uh, in preparing your film you have to depending on your process you have to check first two things one is uniformity another is homogeneity what does it say uniformity means about your thickness of the material uh, if it is a uniform film then you will find that throughout your substrate the film thickness is almost uh, same within a plus minus very small range and we can say this is uniform film and if uh, it is not uniform then property will be different on different thickness that means your film is one single film as you can understand from your um, structure but you will uh, if you probe different point you will get different property because of non uniformity okay so thickness is important factor and uniformity is important means throughout your substrate it should be very uniform and this is very difficult to prepare when you will try to scale up your film means uh, if you try to uh, try to uh, some uh, prepare some film maybe of the millimeter dimension then it is easier but if you try to prepare some film of centimeter dimension or uh, in dimension of few inch by few inch for particular application then it's very difficult to maintain the uniformity so you have to be very careful another is homogeneity what do i mean to say homogeneity homogeneity means it's uh, means uh, chemical uh, chemical uh, composition you can say means for example you are preparing a film with some doping if it is not a homogeneous film then what happens your dopant will not be distributed equally in throughout the film and again it will give different property because where the concentration of dopant atom is higher that property will be different than the place where the concentration of dopant atom is less so for thin film if it is thick film then you don't need to consider all those things too much but for a thin film definitely you have to be very much concerned about the uniformity and homogeneity of the film that together we call film quality so if you are really interested to prepare a quality film then you have to be very careful about your uniformity and homogeneity and you have to prepare your film uh, by controlling different processing parameter so that it maintains the uniformity and also homogeneity otherwise property of same film will be different at different place because nowadays uh, i am not sure whether you know or not uh, you can probe your material at particular point also and you can probe uh, or measure different property on different point of same material so if you measure that then only you can understand that okay your film is whether it is homo uh, homo uh, it is homogeneous or it is non homogeneous now about uh, so i have uh, till now i have mentioned about everything about thin film then its preparation its growth mechanism and also its quality now it's the time to characterize the film because you have now up to now you have prepared your film so next question is what is this characterization how you will characterize all the, all the uh, prepared film 
so this slide it is basically the summary of all the uh, preparation technique characterization te all the characterization technique uh, i am i am not sure whether it is uh, readable from your side visible from your side because maybe the, this uh, sizes are very very small can you read this one anybody uh, i th i think it's okay although small yeah. Yeah, all, um, small because I have tried to pack it in a single slide. Anyway, that slide will be given to you all if you are interested. So you check the left hand side column is uh, the about the materials property which I want to characterize and right hand side of the column is how we will do that characterization. Okay. So for example, the first uh, point is what does sample look like means its structure means physical appearance so that you can if it is a macroscopic scale you can look at uh, that uh, structure just by using some optical microscope okay but if it is a uh, macroscopic scale uh, if it is a microscopic scale then it's not possible using simple optical microscope in that case you have to have some electron microscope either scanning or tunneling okay uh, or transmission because if you want to see microscopic structure you have to use a uh, source which has very small uh, wavelength for example what is the difference between this optical microscope and electron uh, electron microscope whether it is uh, scanning or tunneling the difference is in case of optical microscope we use ordinary light as a source or any light as a source material and light has some wavelength uh, which is much higher you can understand in uh, few hundred nanometers also for example our visible lights are in the range of uh, this 400 to 800 nanometer whereas uh, in case of uh, when you are interested to see observe this microstructure microscopic scale then you have to use some electron beam and electron for electron beam the wavelength is very very small of the order of uh, order of uh, less than angstrom also in some cases it is uh, maybe for different kind of electron beam it could be 0.5 angstrom to 1.5 angstrom you can understand how small that wavelength is and smaller the wavelength it will be uh, easier to handle the smaller uh, uh, to see the smaller size that's why for nanoparticles or uh, for thin film if you are interested to see the microscopic structure you have to use either scanning electron microscope same or transmission electron microscope tm even in atomic scale also it is possible in that case you have to use stm which called scanning tunneling microscope or afm basically they are probing technique okay so this kind of uh, all these kind, except optical microscope other electron microscope or scanning probe microscope they are very costly of the order of few crores four five six seven eight nine ten crores even some, there are some special kind of tm transmission electron microscope which are uh, more than 40 crores and in fact they are called titan uh, transmission electron co uh, electron microscope to my knowledge there are only two in uh, india right now one is at tifr and another is at isc bangalore okay so this is about the structure macroscopic structure or microstructure next point is what is the structure of a sample means crystallographic structure if you are interested to see the crystallographic structure what is crystallographic structure means where is your lattice where is your basis basis kind of things then and what kind of phases are there what is the density and all those things then you have to explore different kind of uh, technique all these techniques are very sophisticated technique so very easier or, or cheaper is x-ray diffraction technique which simply we call xrd by which you can uh, identify uh, the phase of the material whether there is any impurity or not what is the size of the crystal and what is the stress uh, inside the material everything can be um, uh, estimated using X-ray diffraction technique. Only thing is you have to know the estimation technique because uh, there are some techniques which are uh, not so easy. You have to run some software, some process, and from that process you have to estimate all these parameters. Okay, so XRD can give 
uh, your information about crystallographic structure. Uh, other than that, also there are some more costly technique like low energy electron diffraction, LEED. There is uh, quartz crystal monitors also QCM. So different techniques are there, but most cheaper and easier way is to use XRD, X-ray diffraction pattern. And if you use XRD, you can identify your phase. If it is different, uh, uh, more than two, uh, one phase, then also it is possible to identify from XRD. Uh, you can identify the crystal structure. You can, you can uh, identify what kind of phases are there and what is their um, um, geometry, crystallographic geometry, whether there is any impurity or not, what is the lattice parameter, if uh, there is any impurity or not, everything can be identified even that is parameters can also be estimated just by using XRD data. Uh, if you go for uh, this kind of technique which we called Ridville technique and there are some other techniques also nowadays from which you can estimate all these parameters. Uh, all this, uh, That parameters will give you the structural things about crystallographic structure. Okay, Then if you come to the composition kind of things, you have prepared a material, for example, uh, as I said, if uh, say, for example, you have, uh, you are interested to prepare a zinc oxide uh, thin film. So uh, you have used some kind of zinc oxide source, either it is CBD or PVD, you have used that one. And by using that, you have prepared a thin film and uh, it is supposed to be zinc oxide, but whether there is any defects and uh, what are the uh, chemical composition, you would need to know all those things because property will depend on all those things. And for that, you there are some techniques you, you can explore, but most easier, I must say, is either uh, this EDAX called Energy Dispersive Analysis of X-ray and another is X-ray Photoelectron Spectroscopy, XPS. If you can use all those things, you can get what are the elements are there, what are the compositions, what are the impurities, even what are the valency state of the elements. That is also possible. So this kind of information means sample uh, uh, compositional kind of things. That kind of uh, characterization can be possible uh, using XPS and EDAX. Now, if you talk about your optical properties, means refractive index, absorption, uh, dialect, uh, dialectic constant, reflectance, transmittance, everything, that can be uh, done using ellipsometry or there are some other uh, very simple technique like UV visible spectroscopy, there are uh, photoluminescence, uh, PL, fluorescence uh, technique, many techniques are there. In fact, uh, I know that in, in this Tripura University in physics department, they, are a lot of, they have a lot of spectroscopic instrument. In fact, they are very good in uh, spectroscopic uh, things. So uh, in your uh, physical uh, things in next week, definitely you will be introduced all those techniques and you, you can see all those things. It is there in uh, physics department of Tipura University. So using that things, you can get the optical uh, properties of the material. Now about the electrical properties. For electrical properties, uh, best way is to uh, uh, measure the electrical things using four probe. You can get the resistance, then uh, conductance, then impedance, even by using two probe, you can get uh, the, all those parameters, including uh, capacitance, which are required for uh, characterizing a material uh, towards electrical uh, electrical property. So that is possible. And if your film is, um, if your material is magnetic kind of things, if you have uh, prepared a magnetic film, in that case, you can use this ferromagnetic resonance system, FMR. You can use this uh, magneto-optical car effect MOKE we call MOK, but the most easiest is VSM or SQUID. VSM is little costly. It, it, it could be uh, around one crore, but uh, SQUID is very costly. It is above six crore nowadays. But using that uh, kind of uh, sophisticated instrument, you can characterize your material from magnetic point of view. You can get your magnetic moment, you can get the hysteresis loop, you can uh, get the value of coercivity, you can get the energy storage capacity, everything you can get uh, if you have uh, this kind of squid kind of facilities. That is from magnetic characterization. 
then also uh, also there are other things like mechanical properties and all those things that can be uh, used uh, uh, kind uh, if you that can be uh, measure if you have nano indenter kind of things or uh, simply stress strain measurement system uh, the, using that also you can measure mechanical properties so in a nut cell though it looks like very clumsy but it's the single slide which can give you the idea about the almost all kinds of characters and technique for all properties in a single slide that's why i have used this slide otherwise i can uh, make it on different uh, slides but the thing is if you keep this single one you can go get all the ideas so that is briefly about all kinds of almost all kinds of uh, characters and technique which you can use for your uh, materials which you have prepared in your laboratory now i will give you little bit uh, more about one two technique which are very simple technique for example for a thin film if you use x ray diffraction technique here you see the green one is s4 and black one is s1 and in between there is s2 and s3 what is the difference it's the same material s1 has the thickness is 300 nanometer and s4 is 830 nanometer means s1 from s1 to s4 if you go down that uh, everything is same material is same only thickness is increasing and if you increase the thickness uh, thickness what kind of uh, effect you will find in xrd you see for this black one which is the thinnest one 300 nanometer uh, um, thickness in that case your peaks are just coming it's uh, one may say that it's kind of uh, amorphous kind of things but when you are increasing the thickness slowly that crystallinity is appearing and you see for uh, s3 which is blue and s4 which is uh, green all the peaks are very prominent so if you make a thin film and if your film is really very thin you can end up with uh, this kind of amorphous kind of things and if you go on increasing the thickness then you can uh, end up with this uh, crystalline film let me say you one thing whether all of you know or not in xrd pattern if you have some kind of amorphous or non crystalline material then it will not show any peak it will show some hump kind, kind of things it's a hump we call and that should be in low angle uh, between 25 to 35 uh, region and no peak in that sense but if it is really a crystalline material particularly polycrystalline material then definitely it will show lot of peaks in different angle position and every separate peaks indicates one plane for example here if you look at this uh, picture uh, see uh, the film which is uh, below 35 is one for one zero zero plane this uh, in the, uh, this uh, per, uh, data inside the parenthesis is nothing but miller indices that indicates one plane so different plane like 100, 0, 0, 0, 002, 101, that kind of planes are uh, identified from XRD data. But uh, when it is in the very thin film form, for example, when it is S1 sample, you see all the peaks are not prominent, even all the peaks did not come. Only the low angle peaks has appeared, but the higher angle peaks is not there. So once you are going to, uh, once you are uh, going to increase the thickness of your film, uh, and if you systematically study XRD pattern, then you can see that crystallinity is developing one after another. And for thicker film, it will be nicely crystalline material. Okay. Now, you see why define thin film, ultra thin film and thick film. That time I have said that it is nothing but the thickness of your material. Now you can question me, sir. You have shown a lot of things. You are uh, talking many things uh, for more than one hour, last one hour. But uh, you are silent about the thickness of, uh, of the film. And the basic thing is how we'll measure the thickness of the film. So these two schematics, one is schematic, another is ACM micrograph, means uh, scanning electron micrograph. Using these two, I will try to show you how you can measure the thickness of your prepared film. So please concentrate on the uh, left hand side corner uh, figure. Uh, 
that is you see we call this is a profilometer uh, graph what is that profilometer or we call it stylus this is nothing nothing but a scanning probe by which we can very easily measure the thickness of the film it's not only the thickness we can measure many other properties also but thickness of the film can be measured very easily and how we measure basically in stylus there is a pointer kind of things if it is con in contact mode and if it is non contact mode then we use some kind of light it will not touch your material it is not it will not touch your uh, uh, film just by focusing some light also it can uh, measure the thickness so let me explain this uh, uh, you look at the picture of this uh, left hand side picture and uh, from the blue arrow in the right hand side that one uh, which one is on the yellow coating okay which is your material coating and the uh, other one is substrate so when it is on your coating and if you go on move your this stylus towards left hand side, left hand side you see that you will get a flat line you look at this uh, lower uh, one it will be a flat line but when you will end in your thin film and you come to substrate you will see that there will be a drastic jump and it is coming to substrate one it is substrate that tip will again give you smooth line because you are on the substrate only when you are film that is also if it is uniform that will give you almost similar uh, line same uh, straight line and while you end up with your film and you are coming to substrate then there will you will get a jump uh, you are coming down and again when you are on the substrate then substrate is again plain uniform then you will get another straight line so this uh, jump from the above straight line to lower straight line which is marked as h this height that is nothing but the thickness of your film okay am i clear <clears throat> so that is one of the egs technique the stylus if it is <clears throat> contact mode stylus and if it is very simple kind of things and uh, just uh, to use for this uh, thickness measurement only on for uh, for uh, uh, thin film then it is uh, very cheaper maybe of a few lakhs only but if it is on non contact mode you using some sing, uh, signal light and you are um, interested to characterize much uh, uh, more parameters on thin film then it will be very costly of the order of 50 lakhs 60 lakhs 70 lakhs kind of things <clears throat> Now you look at the ACM picture, scanning electron microscope micrograph, which is at the right hand side. You see at the very right hand side, the contrast is same, which is polyethylene film. And in the left hand side of this micrograph, you see the contrast is same, which is a epoxy. Here we are using this epoxy resin as a substrate. On that epoxy resin, a thin film of polyethylene has been deposited. And if you see the fracture uh, fracture surface of the film including your uh, substrate then the same micrograph means scanning electron micrograph will be look like this as long as you are on the film it will be on same contrast when you are coming to interface means in between uh, this your material thin film and the substrate there will be kind of interface and in that place actually there will be mingling of your substrate material and also your film material that's why this is high contrast okay and once that is covered then <coughs> you can come to your epoxy region which is again uniform thickness of different type uh, contrast is uniform of different type so from here also you can directly measure how much the thickness of your film means this p film this uh, this one is your film thickness and this one is your in the middle one which is more bright that will be the thickness of your interface and then the surface uh, that substrate so by using scanning electron microscope also you can measure your uh, thickness of your film and also you can measure the interfacial region thickness of interfacial region in fact which is not possible using this profilometer profilometer can just measure the thickness of your film uh, but not the interface thickness but if you use high resolution uh, ACM scanning electron micrograph then it's very easy to measure the thickness of the film and also the thickness of your inter, uh, interface because as I mentioned at the beginning of my talk that for thin film interface 
plays an important role because here you can understand that <coughs> your substrate molecules or atoms will mingle with your film molecules and atom and they will make a composite kind of things a very thin layer which is the interface layer and that has uh, certain effect on your thin film so i have uh, described many things so now i am coming towards uh, end of this uh, my presentation towards and now i will discuss a little bit about application side okay so on application side for thin film why this is important because nowadays thin film is used everywhere starting from energy sector to environmental sector to healthcare and also it interfacial sector actually nowadays throughout the globe because of this uh, global um, warming or environment crisis whatever you may say and also for better healthcare technique and for uh, these uh, alternative energies uh, uh, search nowadays scientists are more interested on this energy sector environment sector healthcare sector and also government say it is any government whether it is india government us government or any european government all government invest their r and d uh, fund mostly in these sectors like in energy environment healthcare and all those things sector and if you look at this picture very carefully thin film has application in all these sectors okay so this is gross but if you look at for more versatile effect of uh, thin film technology then you see starting from chemistry to optics to optoelectronics to electronics to <coughs> magnetic materials to develop new materials to uh, healthcare for biomedicine everywhere to sensor to mechanics everywhere you can apply thing uh, thin film even you if you give some simple coating of thin film on any material that can also give you some beneficial effect so this slide <coughs> grossly show you the application of thin films the application uh, rather i must say the application possibilities of thin film versatile possibilities of thin film on almost on every sector every area even this application can be classified on uh, base of the properties also for example if you make something thin film towards optical uh, uh, application then uh, you can use that for anti reflex anti reflection coating for interference filter for some decoration purpose for color changing for memory device also for electrical if you prepare uh, some film for electrical application then you can be used for insulating for conducting purpose also for piezoelectric devices you can use some kind of uh, electrical um, purpose with this kind of thin film for chemical purpose, you can use this kind of thin film for barrier deposition means separators uh, for protection against any oxidation corrosion and also for uh, enhanced properties of some anode and cathode of uh, nowadays photovoltaic cells so that can be uh, thin film can be coated on that uh, anode and cathode for enhanced uh, particular application for mechanical application for more hardness for more uh, tribological wear for good addition for, for many kind of uh, mechanical application also you can use thin film and also for thermal properties also for thermal conductivity as a heat sink you can use uh, some thin film coating also even if your material is different if you what i mean to say if you give a thin coat on that material it can enhance uh, different properties as uh, whether it is optical it is electrical or magnetic mechanical thermal whatever maybe so now i will go to uh, for some specific very common example of some application from which you can understand what i uh, wants to say by these slides of application for example a uh, very popular uh, this one anti reflection coating you know nowadays all the laptops use some anti reflection coatings all the a little bit costly uh, spectacle that also use anti reflection coating if you go to any optician for making your spectacle they will always ask you sir whether uh, you are interested for any anti reflection coating or not if you uh, say that yes then uh, uh, it will be little bit costlier but it will give you lot of good effect and what is that if you give a anti reflection coating means it's nothing but coating of a material in a very thin film form some kind in some cases this is ultra thin film and that will basically restrict your reflection 
for example the light which will come to your spectacle if there is no anti reflection coating uh, more than 10% light will be uh, reflected back and transmitted light will be less than 90% and in that case your image will not be very much clear and contrast of image will be very less but if you use some anti reflection coating uh, on the glass of your spectacle uh, it could be different kind of material it could be a very thin kind of zinc oxide composite also which is transparent then what happened it will not hamper your uh, transparency property but on the other hand lot of uh, anti reflection means reflection property will be very very less it will, it could be less than 2% also and almost all the light from the body will come from the body which you want to see uh, will come to your uh, eyes uh, means it could be more than 98% so that uh, the contrast is very good and you can see the material very good okay so that is one example of application of thin film which is anti reflection coating yes this is another very interesting actually i will i will explain few of the things not all because it's a vast area so another interesting is self cleaning coating on solar panel nowadays what happens you know that a government is trying to all the governments is trying for non conventional energy and one of the non conventional energy is solar uh, in uh, solar power uh, things solar panel and what happens earlier days solar panels were uh, used just by uh, using some kind of solar material and they don't uh, uh, have any kind of coating because earlier days what scientists think that if we coat it for uh, giving some protection then uh, the efficiency of uh, this conversion of light means solar cell efficiency decreases uh, drastically that's why though they uh, don't give uh, any kind of coating and that's why this longevity of this solar panel is very very less in earlier days it was like one year two year life of uh, like things but nowadays with the advancement of technology particularly technology related to thin uh, coating solar panel is coated with some kind of transparent coating again it is kind of uh, still now it is a kind of uh, what i say composite of zinc oxide which is transparent so your light absorption will be uh, maximum in fact this coating will um, enhance the properties of your uh, solar panel efficiency and at the same time it is kind of hydrophobic coating what happens it is hydrophobic means it will repel water droplet okay if it is hydrophilic means that coating will attract water droplet but if it is hydrophobic then it will repel and what happens if it is hydrophobic coating then it will not only uh, increase your efficiency it will also keep the panel clean means what are the uh, the dust particle and other things gaseous particle which will come to the upper surface of your panel uh, even if uh, little rain or moisture uh, come to the panel that all this dust and other gaseous particle which is uh, deposited on your film uh, this solar panel that will be washed out by this kind of hydrophobic self cleaning we call it self cleaning technique by this kind of self cleaning process and at the by the virtue of this uh, self coating uh, cleaning process uh, by this kind of thick, uh, thin coating solar cell efficiency can be increased and also particularly longevity can be increased drastically nowadays a modern solar panel can uh, have lifetime more than 10 years also because of this kind of coating so this is another important and very popular example of uh, application of thin film okay another is uh, protective coating uh, sometimes it's called anti scratch coating in your car nowadays uh, the costlier cars which are little bit costlier they use some kind of coating in fact in another day i was uh, seeing that uh, one video from bmw what they do after making the whole metallic structure the whole body of the car they put on a platform and that plat uh, all together that platform is deep along with this car deep into a, into a tank kind of things big tank and the whole car body uh, remain de deep maybe for few minutes and the car gets anti reflection coating and on that they paint and by using that actually what happens if they give this kind of uh, coating then it will ultimately protect your body it will be remain anti scratch and also 
if they use some kind of hydro uh, hydrophobic coating then again it will keep uh, maintain the cleanliness also so that is also nowadays used by automobile uh, sectors uh, for their costly car another one is i am mainly uh, highlighting you some important uh, applications of uh, thin film as i mentioned there are millions of applications i am only uh, giving you application which uh, everybody even if you are not uh, expert in this area you can understand this so this is uh, is i we call this ito coated glass the people who use uh, who work in this area research area of uh, uh, conducting properties of thin film they use this very much what is this this is basically indium tin oxide coating in brief we called ito coating and by giving that coating basically we make the substrate conducting because this uh, indian tin oxide coating is uh, conducting so uh, if on that coated uh, coated ito coated glass if we give some coating of some uh, semiconducting material then this coating will act as a electrode okay that's why we use this because otherwise it's not uh, difficult it's not possible to coat means uh, if you go for some kind of electrical measurement you have to have at least two probe technique so one probe means one coating you can give at the upper uh, surface of the film no problem it could be gold coating platinum coating or silver coating but the bottom surface that is stick to the substrate na so you cannot give that coating there you can so that's why for doing that lower uh, electrode this ito coating is used on this substrate and they act as a electrode for this kind of uh, thin film those who are interested for this uh, electrical properties of thin film they use this so that is another example also there are nowadays numerous example of this flexible thin film starting from energy sector to healthcare to everywhere nowadays even in healthcare we use various kind of patches in our wrist band we use various kind of patches in our body to monitor our heart beat and other things and also that is very much used in nowadays in our mobile particularly those who are full level uh, mobile we use this kind of thin film uh, coating in that so that uh, it can be uh, flexible also it can uh, display everything so it has huge application in this uh, sector also flexible thin film i am not giving you details Uh, so this picture tells about the application possibilities or facilities now i will show three four slides on our activities nothing in details nothing uh, any data or any technique just just to give you a flavor what we do in our laboratory on this area we prepared very ultra thin film as i said that if it is ultra thin film then the thickness will be very very less for example this one the left hand side one is pure copper foil the second one is single layer graphene on this copper foil we use special kind of cvd technique to prepare this single layer graphene you know single layer layer graphene is very very difficult to prepare you have to uh, uh, adjust various parameter to make that one otherwise it will be end up with multi layer uh, uh, graphene which is of no use and after doing that actually here copper foil uh, is used as a substrate we etch the copper foil using some at is acid base and using the that acid we just etch this uh, copper film <coughs> and the whole single layer graphene will be uh, float on the uh, solvent and from that we can fish out that one with some ito coated glass or different substrate so by that on principle we deposit single layer graphene on different substrate so that's it. that is one thing which we do this is very very ultra thin film <clears throat> not only ultra thin film we do all uh, thick film also for example this left left hand side this is skin printed thick film this is uh, actually we use for pjo thin films uh, for various kind of application for example here we have shown this thin film for one application which we called hydrophone application means it's the uh, it's the device which can uh, record you uh, the um, sound inside water that is called hydrophone so for that purpose some kind of pjo film is used and we prepared that by using skin printing te technique but definitely that is thick film also another kind of thick film we use for our gas sensing measurement uh, what we do basically we manually coat our uh, material sensing material 
that yellow part you can see that yellow part that is actually our sensing material and rest of the things is substrate so on that substrate we uh, coat that material manually definitely that is as it is manual that is that will be again a thick film and if you look at the microstructure that thick film microstructure will be looks like that we prepared that kind of coating of different nanomaterial for gas sensing purpose also so these are some uh, applications of thick film and ultra thin film uh, which we use in our laboratory and which i think that it's better to share with you but i am not going into any data of these things now i have really come to the end of this uh, um, presentation uh, this long presentation uh, i must mention you here even if you don't have any kind of uh, thin film deposition technique nowadays you can think of different thing uh, means 2d material which are again ultra thin film kind of things and you don't need to really go for film uh, for example one is graphene as you know most of you have i i believe that most of you heard graphene it is uh, on principle it is nothing but single layer car uh, carbon actually what happens if you graphene is prepared mainly from uh, graphite and that was first discovered by uh, by andre graham and uh, kiosk uh, novel savage and they gave, uh, in 2004 only and just immediate after discovery only within 6 year 2010 both of them got nobel prize for, for that what is graphene it is nothing but single layer carbon atom actually uh, they prepared is uh, it uh, graphene uh, from uh, using some scotch tape uh, from graphite they have pasted the tape above a graphite pencil graphite and then just by removing scotch tape they find that graphene layer i mean one layer two layer three layer uh, carbon atom is coming on the tape and by analyzing that they can understand that yes uh, by this process they can prepare graphene maybe not the single layer maybe few layer graphenes so graphene is nothing but it's a honeycomb structure and it's a single layer uh, carbon uh, material but on principle very difficult to prepare carbon uh, single layer which i have explained in my earlier slide that we are doing but this is very critical even in some cases it's not pure single layer even 95% is single layer 5% multi layer is there so it's very difficult to prepare single layer but even if it is few layer or multi layer that is considered as a th thin film and nowadays people are more interested on that because of some uh, important properties there uh, graphene is the strongest material ever uh, discovered graphene is very much conductive even much more higher conductor than any um, this silver and all those things also it has very good strength so it is one alternative of thin film or thin materials this we call 2d materials as i explained in my nanomaterial definition this is 2d really 2d because here x y direction is there but z direction is very limited either one layer two layer very very small and uh, motion of electron is restricted on that direction as this is very very thin film ultra thin film uh, like thin film graphene has also huge application possibility in different area including energy environment healthcare and sensing i am not going into details i have already uh, given you so many things and i believe that uh, digest all those things in a single lecture is also very difficult so i will end up with this latest developed 2d material which called nexin okay what is nexin this is nothing but uh, a material tri component material one is m m stand for uh, this blue color material uh, which is there in the periodic table and t stands for uh, this basically c and n c is carbon or nitrogen okay and another one this one is uh, basically uh, this yellow part so these are the three component if we uh, denote this m x t generally then m will be this blue part blue part t will be only two either carbon or nitrogen and this x will be uh, basically this uh, this uh, a part uh, x is two part carbon and nitrogen and t will be this yellow part so this is a tri component system this is the latest in 2d material what is this basically it is also from 3d material from bulk we prepared all those things like uh, bulk phase is called max phase and from this this max phase actually m a and x 
this uh, this stands for this three different type of element which i have shown my previous slide the, uh, this uh, periodic table so this is called bulk called max phase by etching that max phase using some kind of uh, this hydrogen uh, fluoride kind of thing uh, we etch that one means the z axis stacking we make it very weak and after that we use some kind of ultrasonic technique so that this layer actually their layer structure this layer can come out and on principle you can get single uh, layer of the this mixing so this is from max phase to mixing these are the latest of the 2d material and you can on principle call it as a very very ultra thin film uh, basically this is also 2d material and it has also a lot of application possibilities and this is my last slide which shows that uh, it has uh, it is in fact much way better than graphene also because it is more strong uh, because it does not contain any van der waals bonding it exhibit a uh, high electrical capacity this is flexi more flexible and more stable also than if we compare the latest to be with graphene okay so what about the future of this thin film we have already prepared uh, uh, various kind of we means uh, the researcher has prepared various kind of thin film of different material for different application which uh, i am now uh, talking for uh, around last 2 hours uh, but still there are a lot of challenge and uh, future of thin films depend on all those things one is transparent electronics for transparent electronics actually we have to develop very stable transparent thin layer material also oh, some kind of uh, this flexible organic biodegradable electronics uh, application we need some kind of flexible organic coating also we need some super hydrophobic coating i have explained you hydrophobic coating uh, for this application of solar cell solar panel so that has to be developed uh, so that efficiency can be much more and it can maintain the cleanliness much more better way actually this hydrophobic uh, has a lot of natural uh, example also for example if you look at lotus leaf you know they are naturally uh, natural clean uh, process you will never uh, get uh, any dust in lotus leaf because lotus leaf has some kind of hydrophobic coating on the top surface and whenever rain drop comes onto the leaves any dust which is there it will be washed out because water particle water molecule cannot stay on the lotus leaf because lotus leaf has hydrophobic coating so by saying all those things i will conclude my talk and of course what i have shown a uh, little bit what i have shown from uh, my laboratory work or of, of a group, group work uh, that is uh, done by various research scholars so i should acknowledge all the man powers involved in our group or in our department also i should uh, acknowledge dst csr for financial support yeah thank you very much so i should stop here uh, then if you want to discuss anything any issue i will be happy to explain thank you uh, dr pal it was really nice with very informative lectures and then uh, wide overview of the whole thin film subjects so i i guess ki participants are benefited a lot so now is discussion session i see lot of message with appreciation so if uh, participants have any query they can raise in uh, the chat box or directly they can unmute and uh, speak also uh, one one question is there so can you read or shall i read for you yeah, it's better if you read okay so this is by dr joshimuddin thank yeah. you sir for your interesting talk about the overview on thin film during the estimation of thickness by ses whether the sem it should be sem i think i have explained sem yeah yeah, yeah maybe sem mm -hmm. so whether the stylus will damage the film yeah it's a good question uh, i must say that uh, that's why actually nowadays people use non contact mode also i i have uh, said that one during my presentation also yeah 
दिस इज काइंड ऑफ स्टाइलस इज कॉल्ड प्रोफाइलोमीटर स्टाइलस yes if it is in contact mode and if it is uh, the your coating of your material is very very soft there is a little chance little probability that it can damage little bit that uh, there can be a uh, little uh, scratch on the film but if it is hard film then there is no problem because this stylus is very very soft and the purpose of this stylus is just to touch nothing else and if it is really soft then it is advisable there are now non contact mode uh, profiler is surface profiler is available uh, they don't use any kind of tip they use only light by pointing light on your on the surface it is possible to measure the thickness of the film and in that case there is no question of damage or no question of scratch okay uh, then he has uh, another questions yes can i prepare a uniform layer of agar of about 2 micrometer on a glass plate to make it a tlc plate as the trademarked tlc plate is costlier if possible then how yeah again again uh, i must say on principle this is possible but the tlc plate which are available in the market they are costly because they are deposited they are not made made by chemical process because if you use chemical process then lot of other uh, problems occurs Uh, because chemical process is not that much sophisticated process uh, but cvd and pvd are sophisticated process and your films will, will be very good because tlc plate is used for as a reference uh, for characterizing material particularly for various kind of organic material so it's difficult to make by chemical process but one can try if they have some kind of uh, deposition technique either uh, cvd kind of things or pvd kind of thing i hope uh, i have made it clear to uh, dr josimuddin who has raised this question i don't know whether he, still now he is logging or not yeah he is here yeah okay uh, uh, he thanks you thank then i see another question by jyoti bhattacharya yes sir is the substrate fixed for preparation of any particular kind of thin film no no not at all not at all substrate you can choose and substrate has different uh, for example ito coated substrate is very costly but uh, you can for uh, depending upon your purpose you can make film on ordinary glass slides also which used by medical people for blood test it depends it depends upon what kind of application you are trying to do even you can uh, nowadays a lot of ceramic substrates are available for high temperature application they are also not uh, costly they are also very very cheap so substrate is is, is your choice depending upon your material and your application uh, there is another question by mr alok das sir how can we improve the adhesion of thin films on substrates yes that is also another interesting point see uh, when i was uh, giving the pros and cons of uh, different preparation technique that time only i have mentioned that some techniques are good and in that cases like for cvds adhesion will be much more uh, better because it is high temperature process but for uh, pvd it is uh, not that much uh, very good however for different process you can make uh, some uh, strong adhesion of your film if you treat the surface of your substrate in proper way if you can etch the surface by chemical way you can make some defects of your substrate but that again uh, with a limit because uh, then uh, for measuring something for application some application purpose they may again hamper your property so everything actually everything is depends uh, I, i mentioned now that there are so many parameters everything is depends upon your material choice of material your choice of substrate and most important is choice of application otherwise for example when i was a student uh, research scholar grf sra i worked uh, some uh, on some thin film prepared by chemical process so there our, our target was not exactly application of that process to any sophisticated device our target was to make some non conventional film and to characterize electrical characterize them in that cases what we used to do we use some glass slide as substrate and 
before depositing uh, this material thin film on the substrate we used to keep this glass side uh, slides on some hf solution okay if you use hf you know that hf has the property to degrade your glass glass is almost non degradable material uh, years after years uh, more than 100 years it can stay, uh, stay and it is non degradable in that sense but to degrade is, uh, this glass is uh, most easily is uh, to use the hf in fact if you use raw hf for a uh, few minutes or like say hour the whole glass will be dissolved you will not find anything so we use restricted etching we call it restricted etching using chemical technique what we do we make some uh, light solution of hf and we keep deep, deep uh, this uh, glass substrate for few minutes maybe uh, five minutes three minutes two minutes and <clears throat> basically we make the upper surface of the glass surface little bit rough and then we coat the film uh, on deposition technique uh, then what happens that uh, uh, because of that rough surface the material which is coming that will stick to your substrate more strongly addition will be very much strong so that you can use but again i must mention that for some application depending upon uh, for some light application it may hamper the properties also so uh, there is another uh, questions by dr nitin b srivathe sir can we design mosfet by using this technique yes yes possible yes yes definitely possible definitely possible uh, as you know this fade are very very uh, thin so you have to deposit kind of uh, this kind of uh, <coughs> single layer type of things then it's possible it's possible on principle it is possible then uh, obhishek das thanks for your nice talk i want to know whether lattice mismatch should be the only parameter to choose a substrate for growing a epitaxial film is there any other parameter to choose a substrate yeah what he has said he is right my comment is if somebody is interested to grow epitaxial film then lattice mismatch match is most important parameter he is right so yeah anything else uh, i i don't see any questions up there but there are a lot of appreciation so if there is no any further questions and i have already shared the slides with the participants in whatsapp group and also uh, contact of uh, professor pal is there so if yeah. somebody is interested yeah. they can directly contact with yeah professor i have no pal. problem you can share with yes. everybody so with this let us thanks uh, professor pal for sparing his valuable time and uh, enlightening us in this uh, exciting field of research thank you very much sir yeah thank you and uh, part dear participants so mm -hmm. today we are almost at the end of the sessions we share the feedback form so you please uh, this is actually not feedback this is attendance form so please uh, respond on it and feedback at the end of the program you have to fill up the feedback on the portal itself not in google form okay uh so with this let us uh, conclude this sessions and please do join tomorrow by 6:50 we'll start the second session by tomorrow 7 pm thank you very much good night yeah thank you thank you sir thank you sir thank you good night